Right, here we go. So this is basically just going to be a tutorial of how to remove your dash fascia panel um, and remove the instrument cluster. There's a number of reasons you would need to remove the instrument cluster, um, whether it be you need to replace a bulb um, or you might have an issue where the uh, fuel gauge and the temperature gauge aren't working and that would be something to do with voltage regulator. That's an easy replaceable part. These cars are so simple to work on, they really are. Um, there's no real great art involved in them. I've taken these apart, hundreds of these apart really. Um, so I'll just show you how to do it. I haven't done one for a while, so it might take me a few minutes just to remember exactly where every screw and every little bit of trim clip is, but uh, we'll get there. So step one is gonna be to take the keys out. Step two is gonna be to remove, and this they're all Phillips screws. There's no, well, there shouldn't be any flat bladed screws unless somebody's uh, decided they're gonna put some in there. So I believe, if I remember correctly, it's two for the bottom of the steering cowling. It should just pop out. You can just get yourself a little electric impact drill if you really want to do this and make it a lot quicker. I used to use those. Um, I've gone back to the hand method now because you control how tight and you can sort of feel the threads of everything. So there we go. So there's those two screws there. And that's the cowling off. The cowling splits into two. That's the cowling. Oh, this is bringing back nightmares of working on this car at two in the morning trying to get it ready to go to uh, go to the Brooklyn's anniversary of the Capri. Now this is held in if I remember by a little pin that just slots in over the top of the column. There we go. There's that. Nice and easy. Right, next thing we're gonna do is drop down the lower dash panel. And these do, they are split in two. And if I remember correctly, they normally have a metal clip that joins them at the bottom and pretty much every Capri doesn't have that anymore. Um, this one certainly doesn't either because they're more hassle than they're worth. We've got a screw here, just like so. And then there's one to the right of it, just there. And again, I tried to always put the screws next to each other, the ones that came out, but it's quite self-explanatory. And then to the left of the steering column, last screw. If you decide that you're going to be replacing these, make sure you use the correct kind of screws. They have to be this uh, countersunk style screw, uh, so they slot in and make it nice and flush. Don't use the dome-headed screws or anything like that, Just it never looks right. And you can always tell a Capri that's been taken apart. Um, so there's those three there. There is one on the side, so it's just, you can see, just down the side here. So you need a small little stubby screwdriver for that. that one out there. And let's see what we got here. There we go. Cigarette tray comes out. I think might as well just move the whole tray. I think they just put it up. Pretty sure they do anyway. There we go. One there. I think if you open the glove box, there's one or two down the side of the glove box. In fact, I'll pop round and come and do those on the other side. So we've got two screws just on the inside the glove box. Nice and easy to pull those out. Again, they're the countersunk ones that have been all over the trim. In reflection, these are probably some of the first ones that you remove, but uh, I've made sure they're the last ones because I'll never do anything the right way around.
Okay, so that's the lower dash panel down. Ah, that's probably why the cigarette lighter wasn't working. Actually, had to pull the cable out. There we go, fixing more things than we intended to do today. Right, so let's just disconnect those bits. There we go, so that's the lower panel out. Just there. And we've got the other side, which is this one here. You might have missed a screw. Have I missed a screw? No. It's just sitting on top of the uh, ignition barrel. Don't lose this. This is the grommet that sits around the barrel. Kind of brings back memories about this bit of it being a complete nut up. You know what to remove. Or it might be the fact that I've just completely missed the screw underneath. Yeah, I did. I missed the screw. Right, so that should just in theory just pull out now. Yeah, there we go. Fantastic. You've got the hazard light switch here. That literally just pulls the light connection. That's how you get to it if you need to replace the hazard light switch. Right. Okay, so the next step is um, you want to remove all the hardware along the front of the fascia panel. Uh, pretty easy to do. And one step that people tend to not do, and I don't know why they don't do this, I've got a friend who doesn't, he swears that he doesn't need to do this, but it just makes your life so much simpler. And I think it's a 13 mil socket on a ratchet. And just up here, you've got two 13, it'd probably be not a 13 now, oh, it's a 13, 13 mil bolts. And these literally just hold the steering column up to the uh, dash frame. And as I say, you don't have to take these off to take the binnacle out, but it's a damn sight easier when you do it. And as we know, capris are very expensive, parts are very expensive, and these uh, dash fascia panels, they're very hard to get now. And so if you go and break one trying to do it without spending five seconds moving a couple of 13 mil bolts, then more for you. So there we go. There's those two bolts. They have these two unique washers on them. One of them's a lock washer as well. That's what they look like just there. Right, so there we go. So this is basically the hardest part of the job done, in my opinion. So next one is, you've got the dimmer switch. That just pulls off. You've got the radio panel. Again, uh, does that need to come off? It does need to come off, doesn't it? Yes, it does, Oliver. There we go, they just pop out like that. And then you've got two, I've got a feeling they're like a 15 or something. Yeah, that's a 13. 15. There we go. They're ne never done up tight or anything like that. They just think they're tight, these things. There we go. That's one of them. This is quite nice actually, this is an original radio um, that I had uh, converted to take an auxiliary jack lead so we could just use it to play through our phones when we're driving. But I have found I hardly ever listen to music when I drive this thing, but uh, it's nice to have it if you just sit on the motorway for hours and hours. Right, I think there's a little panel that comes out here. There we go. There it is couple of little washers this is only for a stand you know if you've got a standard radio a lot of capris don't tend to have standard radios anymore and when they don't um, you don't really need to go through that point you can just pull the whole radio out okay so then underneath we've got one two three little phillips screw tabs like so i think most of them are broken on this one they've just got big washers holding them on there's one That one hasn't got one because that was broken. I tell you what, if somebody ever decided they were going to reproduce these fascia panels, they'd make a lot of money. Um, and then we've got this one here, like so. Right, okay. Now, 
there should be one, two or three metal clips, it's like a little angle clip that hooks up behind the dashboard to keep the top in. And I don't know if they're on this one anymore. Yeah, they are, there's one, we've only got one. Be careful, don't lever it, don't pull it, pull from the bottom and it will slide out. Um, and then obviously if you're removing the entire face of your panel, you wanna just pop all of these off here, these connections. Make a note of the orientation of the buttons that run along here because you can actually put them in any single order you want on there. But these are all unique to each one. They only connect to one type of button. So there we go. So this is the main cluster. That's the radio. So obviously you've got a standard radio. That's how you now remove it. You've got four Phillips screws there. And then the Capri cluster is just uh, four screws. Apparently I'll put it together in a rush. And we've only got two. One, two, three, four. And that was most likely because I was rushing to get this for an MOT. I, actually, I remember now. I, I was rushing to get this for an MOT. And... Uh, I threw it back together again because I missed the first slot and the second slot was on a Friday and we were going on the Saturday. So I needed to go for its MOT. So I just threw it together and I remember I was just on the way there and the um, indicator stopped working. And it turned out the relay knackered itself. So I drove around the corner to my friend's house and we nicked it off of his Capri and just put it on there. Actually, that's still the one. I don't think I've ever given him the relay back. Sorry about that, Rick. Um, but yeah, so there we go. We'll put the correct screws in when we reassemble this and they're definitely not the right ones these are the ones that i'd tell people never to use on capris they're not right and they're i'm using them okay so that's it that's as simple as it is really no major way to go about doing it so we've got the speedo cable in the back that's a they're always interesting to do but you just squeeze the side tabs and they just pop out like so and then what we got here <laughs> yeah so this was the uh this was the situation that i got these wires are not correct they're actually soldered to the bulb holder because i blew the pcb out the back of this thing um because i didn't connect the battery and you know what i still haven't connected the battery and i really should have learned by now to disconnect the battery and you're messing around with this um so that's a really good point before we go any further we'll disconnect the battery and then we'll remove this and next thing you'll see is this will be on the bench and we'll start stripping it down i won't film it but all you need to do is you just use a um, spanner just to pop this off and that's for your oil pressure gauge pretty much every capri's got that unless you're a yeah i think maybe a 1.3 or base spec capri uh, so that comes off and then this is the main wire and loom connector you just squeeze that together and that comes out but i really should have mentioned that and that's something i always screw up with Make sure you disconnect the battery if you're ever working on anything electrical related and no matter what you're doing, if you're doing it, I mean, apart from a light bulb or something stupid like that, that's fine. But if you're doing anything in depth like this, disconnect the battery because, you know, some of this stuff is live on the back here and you've got an, a metal frame that's earthed to the body. So uh, make sure you uh, disconnect the battery. We'll do that. I'll disconnect the battery. I'll take that pipe off, disconnect it, and then we will start taking it apart and trying to make a good one out of a couple of the other ones. So here we are, here's the instrument cluster out. As you can see, some of the problems that we've got are the burnt out track, which is covered with this tape. There we go, that's the problem. It's a shame because this was a lovely PCB. This is the one we're gonna replace it with. Very straightforward to do. It just involves pulling all the bulb holders out, unscrewing the voltage regulator, and uh, that's it. And a few of these, all these seven mil nuts along here and the whole PCB just lifts off the back, like that one there. It took about two seconds to do. It's, um, you've got to be really careful because they're very fragile. These copper lined parts here, as you can see that one, I've had to try and straighten that one out there. They're very, very fragile. I'll put it on a time lapse and you can watch me do it.
Right, here we go. So it's all back together again. I've just put the loom plug in, the oil feed for the oil pressure gauge and the speedometer cable, but it's still not screwed in at any point here. So um, I'll be honest, I don't think we're going to get this one working and I don't think we'll get this light working. I did have them working temporarily, but it's actually a problem with the new PCB that I fitted, which isn't a new one, it's an old one. Um, it was quite deteriorated around the bulb holders and I didn't really want to get involved in soldering wires. And I know that PCB is not a permanent fix for this car. It needs a brand new one if I can afford one or it needs a good second hand one. So we'll just wait for a new one to turn up. But uh, as long as we can get the rev counter working, which would be fantastic. The main one is the fuel gauge. I have no idea how much fuel is in this, but I don't think there's a lot. And the temperature gauge. You probably won't see anything on the temperature gauge if it starts working, just because the engine's stone cold. And the fuel gauge, hopefully we should see something unless it's completely empty. And hopefully the rev counter. So let's flick the ignition on. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it hasn't got a lot in it at all. I remember this was very accurate, this fuel gauge. Uh, we won't see anything with that until it's running and warmed up. And these, let's try that again. Oh, there we go, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, all of them working pretty much now. But yeah, no, we haven't got this one working. Or this one. That's not the end of the world. We've got, yeah, that's for the main beams, indicator. Fantastic, that's all we really need at the moment. I'll just put it back together now. I'll put it on a time lapse. There's no point in me doing a tutorial because it's the exact reverse of how I took it apart. So there we have it, that's the job complete now. Um, it didn't take too long to put back together, probably about 15 minutes total. Um, all went back in, all the correct screws went in the right place. So it looks factory original. So that's it. I did actually find, quite interesting, this was the last time it was driven, oh, was, there we go, uh, 2019. And that was for the Brooklyn's 50th of the Capri anniversary thingy. So that was the last time this car went anywhere, um, apart from today when it went up the road a couple of times. A couple of little bits I've got to do. I've realised these aren't the correct uh, dials uh, or knobs, whatever you want to call them, for the radio. They're just glued on there, which is why they don't. This one's only just sort of balanced on there. That one's slotted back on. So we need to get a couple of those if we can find some. Um, but yeah, I'll be on the hunt for a decent PCB, but this is more just to show people how to do this job if you did have any of the problems. So as I say, if you have any of the issues with the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge, before you start taking this apart, check the fuel gauge. It's very easy. You just take the two wires off the fuel sender on the tank and put them together. And if the fuel gauge goes up, then you know that it's the sender that's the problem. But if it doesn't move, then we know it's a voltage regulator that's the problem. And that's the small little block that was screwed onto the back of the instrument cluster. And it's very simple to change. It's only one Phillips screw and that's it. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Next episode, we will most likely be getting the tracking done. So I'll take that somewhere. I probably won't film that. Um, and we'll do a power steering flush followed by a valve um, adjustment because I do think it is still favoring slightly to the left. It's only just noticeable, but it's enough to annoy me while I'm driving it. So we will go ahead and get that valve adjusted. But I'll do a lot of research on that first and make sure we do a step-by-step -step guide. Um, hopefully this is been helpful for some of you people i have now got my new welder that's turned up today so the range rover project will now carry on again but it does mean that i can now drive this to and from work a few days a week which would be quite nice thanks for watching <laughs>